Alright, for the last presentation in Module 4, we'll be talking about iOS on Cisco routers, and basically I wanted to go over sort of the uh, differences and similarities between Cisco switches and Cisco routers. There is a bit of a difference, and there are some things you'll need to know on the CCNA exam, so let's get started. Contrasting routers with switches, um, routers tend to move packets from network to another, whereas switches tend to move frames from one network to another. Now, routers also typically have one IP address and one network for each interface. Um, I guess I should be a little bit more clear about this. Typically, routers have one network for each interface. That is to say, um, in a, on a switch, all interfaces will be on the same network, usually on the same subnet. I'm talking here about a typical unmanaged layer 2 switch in its simplest form. Um, Routers tend to use interfaces that are not Ethernet as well as interfaces that are. Um, typically these non-Ethernet interfaces are used for high-speed or WAN connections. Um, now here are some additional uh, informational commands. Uh, some of these may look familiar to you from switches. Show version you're probably already familiar with. Show interfaces you're probably already familiar with. Show IP interface brief you may not know of yet. Um, and this command is very useful when we want to talk about um, what IP addresses are configured and what interfaces those addresses are applied to. Show protocols will show you uh, what protocols are running at the time. Show controllers will show you what modules are up and active. And that's pretty much it. Um, so for interface configuration, uh, for Ethernet interfaces, we can configure uh, an IP address on that interface. And we're not talking about uh, uh, on a switch where we may configure an IP address on a VLAN. In this case, on a router, normally you'll want to configure each interface with a different IP. So um, you can also configure a secondary IP, and the router will respond to both of those equally. It's not like if one goes down, the other will take over. No, actually, it will respond to both. And this was useful in older implementations where you could actually implement two subnets on the same broadcast domain. Um, it's an interesting concept. It's not used as much, but it is effective in backup situations where things on one network may stop responding, the other one may still be up. So um, Routers don't need to worry about topology loops, which is why you don't see any spanning tree configuration here. They should segment broadcast domains. So Ethernet broadcasts on one interface will not go out another interface. That is to say, routers do not flood uh, Ethernet broadcasts. A secondary IP can be configured, the router will respond to both, I've already talked about this. So for serial interfaces, um, we'll talk a little bit more about these when we get to WAN connectivity. Uh, the serial interfaces are typically additionally configured with a clock rate, uh, depending on the interface type. The clock rate basically establishes the physical link speed. Um, you may also want to configure a bandwidth on that interface, and this is used by routing protocols. We'll actually talk a little bit more about how routing protocols use this bandwidth as we discuss the individual protocols. Um, there are some that do, and there are some that don't. Typically, the virtual link speed, like I said, is used by routing protocols. And we'll discuss more about serial links as when we get to WAN links. So I want to talk a little bit about how routers typically boot. Um, normally, routers will start with a bootloader. Um, this is called ROMMON. And this is loaded directly from the ROM into uh, memory when the device boots up. And basically, it provides an entry point, um, and it loads the bootstrap, from which point um, it actually starts to load the Cisco iOS image. Uh, typically, this is an image from Flash. Um, you can also load it actually directly from a TFTP server or depending on the device um, you may load it directly from ROM. This is what's known as firmware. Um, typically when routers you'll have the Cisco IOS Internet Network Operating System as you can see and as I mentioned just now that can be loaded in a variety of different ways. After that happens um, the configuration file is loaded. Typically this is done from NVRAM on the local device um, but it's also possible that uh, for security reasons or for other configuration reasons you may want to pull the device's configuration from a TFTP server um, for management purposes as well or over the console um, and you can actually do this um, directly. So typically uh, the iOS boot sequence, the overview here is it will load the bootloader um, and then it will from there it will pull an internet networking operating image, operating system image, it will decompress that image and then it will load a configuration file to apply actual interface and uh, virtual configuration. So if you want to specify what iOS is booted, um, typically this is done with the boot system command and normally this will be with a path to the image that you want to specify. So um, several of these commands can be entered and basically what will happen is with a default configuration register, which we'll talk about here in a bit, um, it will take the first one. So uh, you can enter a path in Flash or possibly, a, like I mentioned earlier, a TFTP server if you'd like to do that. Um, the first available image in the list will be loaded by default. Um, 
And again, there, there are some changes you can make to the configuration register that we'll talk about here in a bit. Um, these commands are stored in the running configuration, so uh, when you modify this, you'll have to get into config mode to enter these boot system commands. Uh, the configuration register um, is an interesting thing. Basically, it is a single value that's looked at when the uh, raw mon, when the bootloader comes up, and based on this value, um, it will determine uh, some various parameters, including the baud rate on the console port. During raw mon, it will determine um, whether the iOS boots or not. It will determine a number of other things, uh, but the one that we're interested in, um, it controls various low-level functions. Where it's all, oh, the value is also displayed. If you ever need to get this value while the iOS is up, uh, you can do it with the show version command, um, and you can set this uh, in while the iOS is up in config dash register. Or if you happen to be in the bootloader, say you're trying to recover a failed device, you can do, use the confreg command while you're in raw mon. Uh, and we're only interested in the last four bits. That is the last hex character um, in the boot, and it's considered the boot field. Um, if this last one is set to zero, uh, typically it will boot only boot to ROM on. It will just boot to the bootloader, and then it will not do anything. It will just stop and wait for you to prompt it to go further. If you specify a one, uh, what will happen is the uh, bootloader will load the first iOS it finds in Flash. It won't even look at a startup configuration or anything. Um, it will just load the first iOS it sees. And this is nice if you want to make sure that uh, the iOS image uh, is is uh, is valid, or if you're having trouble loading a remote image, it may be nice to fall back to an image on the local system. However, if you uh, the default is to set it to two, and uh, any value of higher will actually actually also do the same thing. And this what this will do is it will load the first working boot system command. Um, so it will go through all of the boot system commands in the startup configuration, and then load the first one it uh, f is able to do. Otherwise, it will load the first iOS and Flash. If there's no iOS and Flash, it will fall back to ROM on. So that's the process with the boot field. Um, the common default on most of our routers, including our integrated service routers, and a lot of them, uh, it's 2102, hexadecimal 2102. And that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to give a brief overview of some of the differences that routers uh, have from switches. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the fields, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you in the next module.